That is one of the ways they could take down Donald Trump. It would be devastating to the president if you had this death spiral. Well, I have to admit, I have incorrectly been a bond market bull since right before the Federal Reserve cut interest rates of 50 basis points. I figured with inflationary signals fading away, company earnings calls remarking on a lack of pricing power, and quite frankly, the likelihood that the Federal Reserve will have to increase the pace of their rate cutting, not decrease it, there was only one way to go for bond yields, and that was down, which would mean bond prices would go up. But I missed this. A conversation from J.D. Vance with Tucker Carlson and the implications of pricing in a potential Donald Trump presidency. But don't hear it from me. Let me play you what J.D. Vance said on September 18th, the same day the Federal Reserve cut interest rates 50 basis points. And then let's talk about what some of the takeaways from this are, what they mean for bond yields from then until now, which let's just say not good. But then let's also talk about what they potentially mean going forward, depending on what kind of presidency we end up getting. Here we go. The thing I really worry about on, on bond markets is, okay, we have, call it $1.6 to $2 trillion in debt every single year in this country, getting added to the national debt. And the only thing that really makes that serviceable is that interest rates are still pretty low, right? They're about 4.5%, right. right? Now, if interest rates go to 8%, and you're actually spending way more to service the debt than you are on actual like good services and infrastructure for your country, like that can become a huge spiral that could take down the finances of this country. We've never had that in 200 plus years of being an American republic. We've never had a, a true debt spiral in this country. So I really worry about do the bond markets, do the international investors, the people who are getting rich off of globalization, the people who've gotten rich from shipping our manufacturing base to China, the people who've gotten rich from a lot of wars, do they try to take down the Trump presidency by spiking bond rates? And, and one of the things that I think a lot about, and I talk to the president about this a lot, is when we think about who we're choosing as Treasury Secretary, one of the things the president, of course, it's his choice, ultimately, is we've got to find the guy who's going to make sure that we can manage this country through a real time of crisis where we get the country's finances back on track. That is one of the ways they could take down Donald Trump. And you have to ask yourself, the tools at their disposal, they're doing everything that they can to manipulate voters. I don't think it's going to work. But if Trump wins, it's not just going to be smooth sailing for four years. They're going to do everything that they can to take down So the key number is that interest rate. I think that's probably the most the most important and the most impactful way they could try to take down his presidency is by spiking the interest rates. You saw this, by the How way, Tucker, that? Liz Truss in, in Britain. Yeah. Okay. Which by the way, like I, I like Liz Truss. I disagree with her on a lot of issues. Um, but like, so I'm not I'm not trying to stand up or say Liz Truss is my person, but look, she came in, she had a plan, and the Bank of England, I think, made a lot of mistakes, maybe intentional interest rates shot through the roof and it took down her government in a matter of days. Of course, we don't have the same style of government, but it would be devastating to the president if you had this bond market death spiral. And that's one of the things we're gonna have to fight against when we win. How? And again, I think we're gonna win. Well, let's understand that for a moment. They referred to the destruction of the Trump presidency, potentially via rising interest rates through the bond market. Now, Liz Truss took office on September 6th of 2022. Take a look at the 10-year gilt. This is the United Kingdom bond, the 10-year version of it. You'll notice between August and then the end of September and then the beginning of October during the Liz Trust administration, which lasted less long than a lettuce head, but she did end up getting replaced and yields promptly came down, although not as much as they had come you know, as much as they had moved up, there was some relief after she was replaced. But this increase of, uh, actually, if you look at this, from 2.3% up to about 4.1%, this is a 1.8 percentage point increase in the yield on the 10-year, going from 2.3 all the way up to 4.1%. This creates massive losses for bond market investors. And it was due to the fear of a trust administration. And J.D. Vance here, the day of the Federal Reserve 50 basis point cut, is arguing, what if the bond market prices in that Donald Trump is going to skyrocket interest rates? And since this warning, as you could see on this chart, 
the 10 year treasury yield has skyrocketed from about 3.65 ish percent all the way up to about 4.27. Now that's only about as actually slightly less than half as bad as the skyrocketing that you got because of Liz Truss. But JD Vance is basically arguing here, hey, this could really hurt us. Now, why could rising yields hurt us? Like in plain English, why could this be devastating to the Trump administration? It's simple. In 2007, the Federal Reserve cut interest rates on September 18th, 2007 by 50 basis points. They went from five and a quarter to 4.75. It's the same exact day, just quite literally 17 years later, that we just cut interest rates from the same amount, five and a quarter to 4.75 by 50 basis points. Except then we did it leading into the Great Recession, Great Financial Crisis. Everybody argues today that this time is different, but what actually helped contribute to the financial crisis of 2007, 2008, 2009? Rising yields. And this is what J.D. Vance is worried about. I think he's a smart person and he realizes that, oh no, if markets for some reason think that Donald Trump or a Trump administration would lead to rising yields, it's going to make it harder for us to deal with the massive debts that we have. In addition to that, it could actually create a recession. That's the problem. When yields go up, when the Federal Reserve is trying to loosen monetary policy, you actually make it harder for the Federal Reserve to relax economic tension. You make it harder to expand business or to hire or to invest in new business products or capital infrastructure or whatever because interest rates are even higher. Now, add to this what companies like Robobank or individuals like Nick T over at the Wall Street Journal say about the Trump administration. Now, this is not a dig on the Trump administration. It's just simply arguing what is being said about the two administrations. First, Robobank has suggested that Donald Trump would mean tax cuts for corporations and households, deregulation, and a termination of electric vehicle tax credits. In addition to that, we might see the stopping of the flow of illegal immigrants, and we might end up seeing a single-handed imposition of tariffs of up to 10 to 20%. They go ahead and outline this here. Let's go ahead and jump over to the PDF so you could see it yourself so you know it's not just me making this stuff up, although I would hope that you never think that anyway. Let's hop over. Okay, here it is. So uh, this is what I just read out to you, this section here, and it suggests that Donald Trump can single-handedly impose these tariffs on other countries. Kamala Harris, they argue, would instead be Biden with a twist, reduce health care costs, tax hikes for the rich and corporations, tax cuts for the middle class, with a goal to stop price gouging and provide $25,000 of down payment assistance for first-time homebuyers. The impact out of all of this? Well, when it comes to inflation, they believe that Donald Trump will lead to higher inflation in every single year between 25, 6, and 7. Now, they do argue that in both cases, you will have a divided Congress and they actually go pretty generous here on Trump. They only assume when you read the document, they only assume that he's going to get through a 5% tariff on foreign countries. They actually argue that the inflation under Trump would be substantially higher if you had even more tariffs. But take a look at this. 2.5% Harris in 2025, 3.1 Trump. 2.7 Harris 26, 4.0 Trump. 2.3 Harris in 2027, 2.5 Trump. This is a remarkable difference here. Uh, and if we zoom up for a moment, I just want you to see sort of the summary they have here, and then we'll go to GDP. Look at this. With only one week to go before the elections, the Harris bounce in the poll is fading. A Trump presidency would likely lead to a universal tariff and even higher tariffs on China with support from Congress. He would cut taxes, deregulate the economy, and reduce immigration. A Harris presidency would be an extension of the Biden administration's policies with targeted tariffs on China, reducing health care costs, and trying to cut taxes for the middle class. However, two new Harris-specific policy plans focus on stopping price gouging and dealing with the housing market shortages 
you know, would lead to uncertainties, right? In their simulations, Trump's universal tariff would lead to a rebound in inflation. That could be one of the reasons why we're seeing a spike in yields is this pricing in of Donald Trump that we're seeing. And it's not just uh, an inflation concern, but it's also partly a stagflationary concern, which is concerning. Take a look at this. Real GDP forecasts here under Trump, negative 0.2% compared to Harris in 2025 negative 0.7 compared to Harris in 2026, and negative 0.2 compared to Harris in 2027. This does not even include a recession scenario, and it only incorporates a 5% universal uh, tariff uh, from Donald Trump. So this is kind of scary because you have Robobank here basically reiterating what J.D. Vance is warning, which is that, yeah, bond markets might be fearful not only of these uncontrollable fiscal deficits, but also that if public markets think that Donald Trump is going to be associated with higher inflation, potentially in part because of deportations or tariffs, then yields are going to go up and you could actually induce a recession as a result of yields going up, which is exactly what happened in 2007. Now, Nick T of the Wall Street Journal also chimes in on this. Nick T of the Wall Street Journal cites the Peterson Institute, which is considered a uh, pretty unbiased source. I always like to Google any kind of source uh, and then I type in media bias after that. And there are some good media bias fact checkers, although you wonder what kind of bias they have. But, anyway, you know, they, they seem to be relatively on point. And they find that the Peterson Institute is highly factual and, and almost smack dab in the middle. And so they have uh, an analysis on this. Uh, and again, this is from Nick T. I really respect Nick T. Uh, I think he's he's a great journalist. He's pretty smart. Uh, he's over at the Wall Street Journal. We respect him when uh, he covers uh, Jerome Powell and the Federal Reserve. And, uh, he, you know, he doesn't have any kind of bias or tilt that at least I can identify. He just tries to give it to you uh, straight. Uh, and uh, he argues that both candidates are going to support policies that would support growth. Uh, however, both of them might end up leading to cr the creation of policies that keep inflation elevated for longer, so higher inflation for longer. And according to the Peterson Institute, Nick T argues that deporting immigrants would, quote, significantly reduce economic impact or reduce economic output, rather, while boosting inflation. On top of that, he argues that fewer workers would be available. And as a result of fewer workers being available, prices would either go up or earnings per share at companies would go down as margins get squeezed. Now, some people counter this and say that Americans will just fill that void left by immigrants who are deported. But other studies come back countering this and argue that for every 1 million unauthorized immigrants that are deported, 800, uh, sorry, 88,000 Americans lose their job. So in other words, kick out 1 million illegal immigrants, 88,000 Americans lose their jobs. Now, some people say, hey, maybe that's a fair trade-off, but it is something that's worth noting. Tariffs are also considered to be a stickler with Donald Trump. They expect that there will be an inflationary impact from Donald Trump's tariffs. Now, Trump counters this and argues that we didn't have inflation in 2016 and we just won't again. But then again, you saw the very warning from J.D. Vance himself. So if you're wondering what's going on with a bond trade, there you go. And this is a crazy comparison, basically coming straight from J.D. Vance, a crazy warning about the potential recessionary impact that markets could impose upon Donald Trump without even Trump doing anything, just on expectation, in the event that Donald Trump wins the election. So something to buckle up for and brace for impact on if you're long bonds and, well, Donald Trump wins. Keep an eye on this. Now, do keep in mind, if you are looking for a way to diversify from the craziness of public markets right now and you just want to get a nice 5% yield per year, with 100% of the upside in this company's stock and some downside protection, make sure to check out househack.com. It's my real estate startup. It's a private company. We could IPO at any point, frankly, between probably next year to 2030, 2032 in that range. Uh, I'd like to really get the company growing more first. 
more than it already is. It's an annualized growth profit uh, company, which is fantastic. Uh, we are EBIT profitable. This is a, a real estate company with over $60 million in free and clear real estate assets outside of this bond raise that we're just now starting, which we're just going to use to buy more real estate with. And we pay a yield, this 5% yield, by renting out real estate. We get good deals on real estate in areas where values are growing. And if you want to learn more, go to househack.com. This video can't be a solicitation, so read the PPM over there. Learn more about my real estate startup. I'm really excited about the business. I think we're going to do a phenomenal job, game-changing real estate. And quite frankly, one of my biggest motivations is growing this to be one of the greatest real estate companies over the next 25 years. I am so excited to grow it and I cannot wait to be on the journey with you. So check it out over at househack.com. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Goodbye and good luck. I cannot advertise these things that you told us here. I feel like nobody else knows about this. We'll, we'll try a little advertising and see how it goes. Congratulations, man. You have done so much. People love you. People look up to you. Kevin Pafrath there, financial analyst and YouTuber. Meet Kevin. Always great to get your take.